quick two minute demo uh, of, of how FAQ plus works. And then I'll tell you like how to go about, uh, you know, bringing this to bear within your organizations, what options are available, what customizations are available. Great. So uh, let's say uh, just easy way to bring up the bot interface. Uh, I have populated this uh, bot with a knowledge base that sits behind it. Uh, I didn't do much uh, beyond just pointing it to a publicly available URL on Teams FAQs. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, let's say I, as an end user, uh, I want to know how to create a private message. I don't have to type it out exactly as this. It supports natural language. So any which way uh, I, I position it, it will uh, give out an answer if it's uh, contained in the knowledge base. Uh, a lot of times uh, team specific implementation varies from organization to organization. So for example, if your organization does not have third party apps or certain restrictions on, on teams uh, feature usage, you can create your own uh, custom uh, FAQs on that. So assuming all of that is uh, available, uh, user gets uh, instant help uh, if the answer is there. If not, they can uh, easily request uh, an ex uh, expert's so, help. I, I don't want, let me just, can we, this is great. And who, who, are the, who are the experts that reply to that and how are they configured? Hang on, hang on everybody. We're, we're jumping. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I apologize. We need to go up a level first and I do apologize. So. Um, where is this bot? So where are you in relation to? So again, please take me through. You got to understand this is we're gonna have 30 plus thousand people right on teams soon. Okay. Okay. So I'm a user. I'm just using teams today. Uh, I'm chatting. I'm mm -hmm. in a channel. I'm doing whatever and I have mm -hmm. a question. Mm hmm. How do I how do I call this bot? Where is it? So perfect, good, very good question. So once you've configured and deployed this, this currently this is a, a GitHub repo with complete okay. deployment okay. steps. So the yeah. starting point is uh, the bot is available as this GitHub repo with complete deployment guide. Would not require a developer to get up and running. This yeah. is completely working solution. Just want you need to follow a bunch of instructions to get started. So assuming you've configured the bot and made it available to all of your employees. So uh, here in the App Store, you see built for Microsoft uh, so, or whatever you brand it and call it would be available right here. Can it be pinned? Yes. The app bar on the left hand side. Yes, so you have two options, actually one, two op multiple options available here. Uh, there's something called pre-install APIs. You can uh, not only pin the app on the left rail, but you can also install it uh, for all of your users or some of your users uh, okay. using app setup policies and uh, pre-install graph APIs. What about within each? Uh, so can you click on Teams, for example, and just go into any channel? Um, can it be pinned as a tab or anything on, can we have this preloaded to yeah. every channel as well too? So I, the reason I'm asking these questions guys, the stuff behind it, you'll, we'll get into that in a moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's more from a customer experience perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a customer, how easy is this to get to, right? So yeah, good, good question. Uh, this is a personal uh, bot for all end users. So adding it to a team wouldn't do anything like users would have to initiate like they, they, this is how they will interact with the app in a one on one scope. So the most logical place for this bot to, for you to increase discoverability is on the left rail. Great. It's like so that's asking. using the uh, app permission policies. Correct. Yeah, yeah great. Okay. That makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Good plan. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so it's pinned to the the left hand rail. There, great. You know, they can get to it. They click it. Uh, this is what pops up first, I assume. Is it just the bot says? No, you know, there's how, no like, actually. Yeah, so there is a welcome message. Uh, out of the box, there's a generic welcome message, and it's too uh, far up in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you've been using this. A yeah. Lot. Yeah, yeah. so like actually this is how it would, uh, there would be a uh, card where you can, like in, in the configuration experience, you can add your own uh, like text supported uh, elements. You can say, hey, this is the ENY uh, team spot, ask me like four or five things, whatever you want to put in there. So, and th this tour uh, is contained where, which is not customizable, but this gives you an overview of key features of the bot. You can ask a question, you can ask an expert, and you can also share feedback. Okay, so I see this is threaded and persistent, right? Is it, mm -hmm. that's, um, 
is there a way to customize that to say just only show me the last five questions? I mean, you know, do I really want to start having a threaded persistent FAQ going back X amount of days that we have the policy set for? Is that a, like, is there a particular policy that you don't want to maintain persistence? Because yeah, out of the box. We, yeah, we're, we're going to have a, so if, if, depending on where this sits, we do have policy. Like from the bot code itself. Yeah, okay. So this is completely open sourced. All of the code resides here. You can easily go in and change anything and everything you want in it. And it's completely MIT licensed. Uh, you can tweak it to whatever your particular uh, uh, needs are. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. If you guys, I, I, you know how I work, Lex. I got to take things slow. Peace no worries. Course. Guys, guys. So um, great. So this comes up. Um, is it preloaded for us? Uh, and when I say preloaded, you have it pointing to just some knowledge base, right? I guess some Teams URL. How, where do you where are you pointing this at the moment? Uh, let me get, give you a quick show, overview. Maybe, yeah. Give me a, so a yeah, when you're going through the deployment, there is this portion in the deployment that's called uh, configuration. It's a web app. You'll log in with your AAD credentials. You'll need to tell the config web app, uh, web application, which is the team where the bot needs, like the specialist or SME team where the bot will post requests to, and then the knowledge base ID. And this is coming off of QA Maker. Uh, okay. So you so, say that again. Sorry, yeah. Uh, can you say that again? The, so there are two portions the, to it in terms of configuration. First is you need okay. to tell the application which team is the SME team or the expert team. So and when a user you, says ask ask an expert, that team mm -hmm. is notified of that question. Yes. Yeah, so like, okay. I'll, I'll show you what's happening behind the scenes. So I submitted uh -huh. that question, and it would post it in the team saying this person is requesting support. These are the details. That's so great. anyone who's part of this team will see yep. these notifications and be able to act upon them. Uh, and uh, like this is lightweight ticketing built into this uh, out of the box. You so it, um, it, it, is, is it a single? Sorry, I, I have just one question. Um, so you, you're saying that this will be posted to a Teams or a, or a Teams group. So the, the support team that we designate inevitably to be providing that support when they need an expert they all have to exist within a single team within Teams itself. Is that correct? Correct. So okay. it's a single value attribute. We can't add multiple teams. No. Okay. I mean, you could in theory, but uh, out of the box, this is what the app does. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, within the team, like team members need a way to make sure all questions get addressed. So there's lightweight ticketing built into it. People can go and assign tickets to themselves. It creates an audit trail, like this request is now assigned, assigned to this person, status updates in place. Uh, and then uh, it also creates a feedback loop for the support team. Uh, when the user asked this question, this was the response from the bot. So like, you know, if you see, uh, frequently same kind of questions being asked again like that's an indication okay go in and add this question to your bot so that you know people don't uh keep failing uh, and reaching the experts for trivial things i've got a quick question um and maybe a really stupid question so i understand the the expert part which you just explained but the knowledge part where it has to point to a knowledge base is that a knowledge base that we have or is that the knowledge base that you now showing us where it has more content in it so that's a knowledge base uh, you will set up using a tool called again microsoft tool called q a maker uh, and this one's really simple drag and drop interface to populate a knowledge base. If it's a publicly available uh, knowledge base, you can just copy paste the URL and it will automatically create question and answer pairs. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the knowledge base is done. All you need is the feed the configuration app, the ID of the knowledge base. Okay. So I'll give you and, an example. And, sorry, just, in, just in, in reference to the current existing, do you know if it can pull that from ServiceNow, just as a general question? Because we use ServiceNow for a lot of our knowledge base requirements, and we have a knowledge base entirely built up within the ServiceNow tool. I mean, if you could just copy that across, that would be great from a URL perspective. Does, does yeah. it come out? Can that work? 
I I want to say it does. So what Q&A Maker supports is uh, URLs uh, that are, uh, uh, I think, publicly available uh, or uh, uh, supported documents like uh, FA product manuals, files, PDFs, docs. So semi-structured data and accessible by URL or uploading files. That is what Q&A Maker supports. So if you can extract that data from uh, uh, ServiceNow, uh, then adding it here, uh, these are the options. Yeah, and the, I the can... knowledge-based articles themselves have URLs. They just point it internally, um, but I think that's fine. That should be fine. Yeah, yeah it, so far, oh, high level, I think it's doable. I can go and check with like our ServiceNow SMEs to see exactly what the guidance uh, is there. That's no problem. We'll, we don't need to solve it on this call. But um, so, so Belinda, so right up and, and, and two other things uh, that are possible uh, you know, and then populating knowledge base you can keep swapping adding those things uh, like the bot code is independent on that uh, the other thing is welcome message so the very first time the user initiates a dialogue with the bot uh, it'll send a welcome message so that body of text is what you can control in the knowledge base so currently the default text is hi i'm your friendly q a bot for your common questions and answers you can totally customize it to this is your ENY uh, uh, FAQ bot or Teams bot, uh, and then uh, make sure whatever that language is you want. And sure. then there's another thing called Help tab. So if I bring the bot uh, in a one on one scope, uh, this is the Help tab. And currently it will not render because I didn't put anything in there, but this is a plain text markdown supported uh, real estate. Uh, you can use this tab to uh, whatever you put in here in this field sure. will, uh, and again, markdown supported by way of formatting, but whatever you put in here, you can also use this to put in SLAs like uh, on an organizational basis. Do you expect all queries to be answered within a day or within a week? You can put any and all sorts of uh, contextual information relevant to you uh, in this help tab. Okay. My, my other question as I'm kind of hearing this, this is great, by the way, thank you, is where does Microsoft see this sitting in, in which group to maintain, right? Because it's not just a plug and play, you, you kind of turn it on and walk away, right? This seems like this needs to be sort of molded in a way uh, and taken care of, right? Um, do, you, do you guys see this sitting in an operations type group? Do you see this sitting in the domain group? Where, where, where does, who should so manage it? Like this. Yeah, so like this is open sourced. It would be your uh, IT ops team that would host and maintain it in Azure. Having said that, if there are any, it's how we resolve all of the issues. Like we're pretty uh, good about resolving these issues and making you know making sure all of those are addressed. But if you add any customizations on top of it, that would be uh, things that you would maintain yourself. Uh, having said that, uh, you know we want these to be successful for you so uh, you know wherever we can we'd be happy happy to answer your questions or unblock you as needed we'll, we'll be happy to ask don't worry <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, I just, can i just also ask um just two questions from my side um first, first of all are you aware of or, or do you perceive any limitations to implementing the bot in 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 providing support to end users and second is the bot under development is it potentially going to change its look and feel as time goes by in case one day it decides to change up on us. Yeah, so let's say uh, my, you know, even the backend Q&A makers adding more features as we speak. One of the cool things that they did recently was multi-turn. So, you know, it's not just ask a question, get an answer. You, the bot can have multi-turn conversations. For example, I want to go to California. Uh, what do you mean, California X or California, like California in U United States or in that uh, particular country? So that kind of multi-turn, they'll just launch that feature, which is not baked into this because they both both launched at the same time. So if tomorrow we decide to add it into this template, it will not break your existing uh, code or existing application. What you can do is, uh, you know, uh, implement, uh, if, if you want to get the new features in, you can just pull those uh, features in as an update to the application. Uh, you won't have to do the deployment again. 
So that's like one benefit, but uh, new features will stay new. They will not get auto updated, but you reserve the right to go in and uh, consume those. Well, I, I think the reason, maybe Zach, if I'm wrong, the reason for the, so today we are in TAP, right? And so because mm -hmm. we're in TAP today, we'll create some documentations, we'll create some, you know, no, you know, how-to guides, and potentially, you know, a button was on the left, now it's on the right the next day, right? And we understand mm -hmm. that because we're in TAP. And I think we have a little bit of scar from that, right? So I think, Zach, right, is the question come in, oh. in that sense of saying, Hey, this is new, right? We we've mm -hmm. gone newness before. We're going to start creating documentation, and and now are you going to change some look and feel of this product as we're starting to use it and build our own knowledge out? That makes sense. So this is an interesting thing for you in that sense that you know you are in full control of your knowledge base. So if if anything changes in product, this thing will not per se break, uh, changing anything in the in what the uh, bot responds back with an answer is as easy as going to the knowledge base and uh, changing the question and answer pair. Like if something changes, let's say one of the answers is how to create a team. Uh, if that changes for your organization, uh, all you got to do is change the answer. The bot itself, the code, you don't have to do anything there. Yeah. Okay. So, so Belinda, just just so you're aware, you know, there's, it's not as simple as just point there and just kind of leave it. We're going to have to kind of work through this group to, you know, update and maintain. And and good question, Zach, on the service. Now we should really figure that out because that is where our, we host our data. Yeah. So Q and A Maker gives you this WYSIWYG way of adding questions and answers. So you can go in and change anything. You don't require a developer to go do it. You just want your whoever's maintaining this knowledge base. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to give them access to this, and they can easily add more stuff or, or uh, edit things uh, as.